Hey y'all, Coach and Fry here, got Journey with me. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're talking about the Lord's Prayer. You know the Lord's Prayer, Journey? I think so. Well, you're about to learn a lot about the Lord's Prayer, particularly it in Hebrew. You want to learn how to say it in Hebrew? Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you how this got started. A little bit of background. Praise our Father in Heaven over the Sabbath day. I learned how to read Hebrew. Then. Yeah. <laughs> Sound convincing. Why the world I gotta read it? I mean, you read it, but you pretty much had it. I read it out of the the uh, Jeff A. Benner Ancient Hebrew Torah. But today we're gonna read it kind of in a more um, easier, easier language. All right. Yep. All right. So now let's talk about a little bit of how it started. Well, I can't say everything started. It'd be a little bit long story. But one of the things that I looked up or wanted to know about was the word heaven. What does it mean when you say our Father who art in heaven? What are you saying? Mm. Well, that's what this video is about because you obviously don't know. You don't know what it means in Hebrew. Mm. Well. What the word heaven means is wealth or riches. I thought it meant like, like a haven. I thought it was like another word for haven, like a safe space. That's what it means in English. I think heaven in the Bible is Spelled He Va None Period Don't 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 He says In the King James Version KJV of the Bible, heaven is typically spelled as heaven. However, it sounds like you might be looking at the Hebrew spelling. In Hebrew, the word for heaven is Shemayim. If you're breaking it down phonetically, it might be helpful to look at the individual letters Shin, Mem, and Iyad with the final Mem. The Hebrew letters are different from English letters, and their pronunciation might be closer to Shemayim than HET Var Nun. The letters you mentioned, H-E-T, Vorv, and Nun, are indeed significant in Hebrew, but they don't correspond to the word for heaven. The letters H-E-T, Vorv, and Nun, can form the Hebrew word, Shaven, which means grief or sorrow. That's Yiddish. Yiddish push the chat in, in letters and words. That's why they make their language and look like that, watch. I see how these letters are close to each other. Yeah. So that's what they're doing to you. It says, hey, but they sliding a chat in on you to confuse you. That's Yiddish. They do that all the time. Word, especially words that end in resh, like ra. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll see that in the Lord's Prayer when we look at it, when we get down that far. But that ain't what we're looking for. So let's go back and tell them. Ala Tebu Ya Anawu Mesa Hai Haza Yadla Nawu Mina Horo I Ala Tebu Ya Anawu Mesa Hai Haza Yala Nawu Mina Horo I Alright so why you was gone? Me and he was in here going at me and the angels jumped in to help. I say, I know I want the Hebrew only. Please no influence since the Torah. That means just this book. It says replace Chet with Het because that's what he keep doing, right? Modern Hebrew said they could change it any time they want. Mm -hmm. That's Yiddish. So then he says, oh, it's wealth in the Bible. So what verses? Proverbs 3 and 9. So let's go over there. There's our father's name right there. Honor with your possessions. So right there, the word heaven actually means wealth. So when you say, 
our father in heaven you're saying our father in well mm -hmm. so i looked up the word bless bet lament simich you know i see how you got blessed in there but blessed might have another letter in too right but less so yeah i bless you so you got blessed and then you got blessed which would be uh, um a tet so let's listen to what he says the combination of the hebrew letters bet lamed and samak forms the word belly in biblical hebrew however this word itself does not have a specific meaning in early hebrew texts Instead, let's look at these letters individually and in common combinations. In the context of Hebrew letters and their meanings, the connection between the letters bet, lamed, and samak with the concept of grind or crush can be understood through their symbolic and etymological significance. But this letter can represent a house or place, and its numeric value is too. While it doesn't directly mean grind or crush, it's part of the root words in Hebrew related to grinding or crushing. For instance, the word for mill, as in a grain mill, is e-mill, where the e-mem often suggests the process of grinding. Lame this letter can represent learning or teaching, as it often appears in words related to instruction. Its numeric value is 30. In some contexts, the act of grinding or crushing can be metaphorically connected to the process of learning or breaking down information, though this connection is more abstract. Samak this letter is often associated with support or protection, and its numeric value is 60. The connection to grind or crush can be indirect, as Samak is used in words that imply a supportive or foundational role, which could be metaphorically linked to the underlying processes involved in grinding or crushing. Salaja. Alahata aya nawa ka ashara sawa lacha yama anacha nawa la achara yama salacha alahata aya nawa ka ashara sawa lacha yama anacha nawa la achara yama salacha blessed when you say blessed that's the most relevant letter for grind so blessed mean crush but when they put the T on it that mean grind I don't mean just crush like you bite something crush when you when you when you get a piece of candy mm -hmm. and you want to break it off for the children you got one piece of candy and two little kids. Little piece of, oh, you know, you ain't gonna eat the whole thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So you bite it in half. You just crushed it, right? Yeah. But what he gonna do? He gonna grind it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you say bless, that means crush. When you say bless, I bless you. That means I crush you. But when I say, when you say you are blessed, may you be blessed, that means may you be grinded. You be ground. You be like pulverized. Mm. They put like the uh, the opposite instead of crushed, pulverized, or grinded. That's the point. You think you're saying something good, but you're not. You think they're saying something good to you, but they're not. Both of y'all think y'all walked around saying something good, and you're not. It's like I told your mom. It's like you showed up at an island. And they gave you the bad word for water. What's the bad? If you what's the worst thing you could ask for when you really thought you wanted water? Gasoline. Yeah. And so that's what they got you saying. Mine's a petrol. Petrol. You talking about petrol? That, that's a styrofoam cup. We can't put that. Everybody telling you no, no. Petrol. They like. Petro. Same thing. Same thing. You think you're saying one thing, but it's another. So that's another. What about another word? So there's blessed. What about um, father? Few die. Well, they 
said it meant bread. Sounds like there is a mix up in the Hebrew that for classifying pa, da, pat, which can mean bread. So you think you're saying fa, da, what you're saying? Bread. Bread. So heavenly, you're saying an abundance. Of bread, so you thanking your abundance of bread. Our abundance of bread, crush it be your name. That's what you're saying when you pray. Interesting. When you say Abashimahim. We want to bring honor to your name But the words we say don't mean the same We say Abba Shemaim Gotta watch out, shall I watch him? Abba Shemaim so I had him write a dissertation. You want to hear some of it? Mm -hmm. This is on the Lord's Prayer. And basically what I wanted him to do was to take the Lord's Prayer where we're saying, Our Father who art in heaven, blessed be thy name. And take it back to the Hebrew to find out what it really said. All right, so let's listen. To Unless you want to read it. This book explores the transliteration of the Lord's Prayer, specifically Matthew 6 verses 9 to 13 and Luke 11 verses 1 to 4 from the King James Version, KJV, into Hebrew. The focus is on how these passages can be transliterated into Hebrew characters, following traditional practices without engaging with religious doctrine or tradition. When we Google the Lord's Prayer, those are two times you get Matthew and Luke. So we're going to focus on that and we're going to look in the KJ ver KJV version of the Bible only. I went through a whole lot of work to see anybody have to program it. So you go through a whole lot of work and say, forget about religious traditions and all that. So you're looking at how he broke it down. Yeah. Yeah. So he had to go through each word. Now notice this word right here. He has Awa, but that's Aba, not Awa. Now you see it again. So he says it's Strong's 1. Notice that. That's why I made him to put the Strong's number on there. Because if you go to Strong's 1, see how if you already had the answers, they hide it from you. Yeah. You know, and it ain't his fault. It's the Hebrew, chit chit just find it. The Yiddish. They got it programmed in there. So when you put in Hebrew, it spits out Yiddish automatically. By the fault. You can make it stop, but you gotta know how. And you gotta know to do that. But you see right there, he's saying his age. Okay, let's go over here. 8064. He said that's that word, Sheba, Shama, Yima. Is that right? I don't see. 8064. Oh, it's close. Oh, look, it's close. Shema, Yima. So look at what he got. Where you get all these letters from? Mm -hmm. Are you adding letters? Yeah. That's the Yiddish. They just add, take away, change anytime they want. Like a mathematical equation. When you go over there talking about you want to study Hebrew. Yeah, that's what all them dots and stuff is about. I thought it was braille or something. Alo, tebu ya anawu, mesa hai, haza yadla nawu, mina horo ai. Alo, tebu ya anawu. 
Mesaha Haza Yala Nawu Mena Horo I. They change them anytime they want. Anytime they feel like it. It's like math where you can just go crazy. All you gotta do is just teach enough people to do it with you, and y'all good. But so I had him to go through and pull out the prayer here. And this was his version of it. When I told him to change the letters, I had to take the Yiddish. Well, you can see the Yiddish on here. See the cha at the end right here? That word is ra. That's an R. That's not a cha. It's an R. That's Yiddish. Anytime you see a cha at the end, it's Yiddish. That ain't a cha. That's a, uh, that's a R. Ra. So they trained in the system to do that. All right, so here's the prayer, way down here. You wanna say it? Yeah. Here's the final result. After we've gone through and taken out all of the Yiddish and all of the words that wasn't supposed to be there, the words that were saying opposite and breaking it down to a pure, simple transliteration of the Lord's Prayer. This is what you have. You may be one of the first people to Say this right in thousands of years. Right. I'm going to give it a shot. You have what you have is you have the words in English, which we know many of them are backwards. Like, for instance, you're saying our bread, which is in an abundance. Crush it be your name when you say it in English. That's what it means in Hebrew. But below that, you see the Hebrew letters in the box, and then you have them translated into English. So you can read them that way. And then below that, you have your mom's words as if she was to try to pronounce them with a more English looking word. So you could choose either the letters themselves or the word below, but you can go ahead and say the Lord's Prayer in the pure language. Abba Shemayim Kadawasha Shalara Shem Malakawatara Bawaya Yaishaha Riza Wanara Wailaha Araza Basha Mai Tano Lanawa Lachama Laakala Hayawama Salacha Ela Hetayanawa Kaashara Sawala Chayim Anachanawa Lacharian Ala Tabayanawa Masaha Hazayalanawa Manaharaya Kaya Lara Hama Lakai Watha Wahagaba Waharaha Laiwa Lama Amena Kaya Lara Hama Lakawata Wahagaba Waraha Laiwa Lama Amina Kaya Lara Hamalaka Wata Wahaga Bawaraha La Awalama Amina 